Good morning, friends, colleagues, and distinguished guests. The International Relations Unit of the OECS Commission extends a warm welcome to all of you, and particularly nationals of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, resident here to the virtual flag raising ceremony to commemorate the 41st anniversary of independence of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is interesting to note that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the first of the OECS member states to attain a non-permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council, which is indeed a great achievement for the member states and by extension, the Caribbean region. Today, the island is a thriving economy and has utilized its scarce resources to deliver on the hopes and aspirations of its people in a post-independence era. We are here today to acknowledge and to celebrate that event which occurred 41 years ago and to extend to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines our warmest congratulations and very best wishes for the future. The raising of the flag of St. Vincent and the Grenadines by the St. Lucia Cadet Corps Title of the National Pledge by David Robin, Program Director for Ocean Governance and Fisheries at the OECS Commission and National of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Land of my birth, I pledge to thee my loyalty and devotion in all I think or say or do. Prayer for the Nation by the Venerable Christian Glasgow, Archdeacon in St. Lucia. Let us pray. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we give you thanks for this day and for the many opportunities of serving you as you share in the celebration of the 44th anniversary of your nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We thank you, dear Father, for the journey of nation, nationhood so far, for the many experiences, the successes, the failures, and most of all, Lord, we thank you for the lessons learned from these experiences. There, Father, today we pray that as we move forward for another year of nationhood, that we will be a people of peace and tranquility who live under your guidance and direction. We pray, there, Father, for our leaders, civil and ecclesiastical. And we pray especially for Susan our Governor General, Ralph, our Prime Minister, Godwin, our Leader of Her Majesty's Opposition, and all members of Parliament, both the upper and lower houses, we pray that at all times they may seek the honor and glory of your name and will work for the benefit and forward movement of your people in this nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Dear Father, as you look to move forward in another year, we bring before you all our cares and concerns for the growth and development of this nation. We pray especially, Lord, for the anxieties we have over the many issues of crime and violence in our nation. And most, Lord, as you prepare for general elections, we pray that all things done will be done in an honorable manner and that our democracy may be preserved so that at the end of it all, we may truly be Hiruna home of the blessed. Dear Father, this is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Invites us to join together in that family prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord let the light of his countenance shine upon us and give us peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Remarks by National of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Mr. Colin Huskinson, Operations Manager, Blue Water St. Lucia Limited. My fellow Vincentians and dear friends who have joined us today in celebration. Today, we celebrate the 41st anniversary of the independence of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This comes at a time of great uncertainty. But I dare say, 41 years ago, when our country took that great leap to full self-governance, that too was a time of great uncertainty. And although it may not have been on the scale of a global pandemic, threatening to decimate our economy and upend our way of daily life, our country then, as now, had to adjust to a new normal, a new reality of existence. Yet, the pioneers of independence forged ahead with faith in the Almighty and in their ability and the ability of future generations to responsibly manage our own affairs according to our own will. Every year around this time, we hear the same question. What is independence? Often, the answer is crouched in an analogy of a child coming of age or someone stepping into the world with the courage to take charge of his or own destiny. But today, I would like us to look at it from a different angle. I want us to re-examine the concept of independence through the lens of what makes us a nation. Nationhood requires collectiveness of individuals. To be a nation, we must choose to be responsible, not just for ourselves as individuals, but for each other. To be a nation, we must face the world together with a common culture, a common will, a common desire to achieve a greater good that benefits not just the few, but the many. So that when a country becomes independent, it is not an individual that is coming of age, but a people. The theme for this year's independence celebrations is with strength, honor, and dignity, we stand resolute at 41 and beyond. We stand resolute, and so we must because the challenges we face today can only be overcome if we stand together. We are in the midst of a global pandemic that can only be properly managed if each one of us does his part, plays her role for the good of everyone together. When I wear a mask, it is my way of saying that I want to protect you. And when I see you wearing yours, I know that it is out of concern for my health. But that is just the first step. Our country has to rise out of the economic morass that this pandemic has created. That is not possible unless we stand resolute, unless we stand with strength, we stand with honor and dignity. Through this lens of nationhood, let us consider also that independence is not a moment in time. It is an ongoing process of renewal and recommitment to those ideals that we held so dear on October 27, 1979. Back then I was only four years old, too young to appreciate the significance and the gravity of that moment. What of those who were, who were not born as yet? but are now expected to keep the fires burning. It is only through the collectiveness of which I spoke earlier can the spirit of independence transcend age and time and be passed down through the generations. 
Every year, we face new challenges. Every year, there are new obstacles to overcome. Every year, we must fight for our independence anew. How do we do that? By standing together with strength, honor, and dignity. The fact that we are having this celebration today gives great hope. We are unable to come together physically. We could easily have said, let's forget about it this year. But so alive is the spirit of independence that we were determined to find a way. We are Vincentians living abroad. And in these circumstances, it is easy to forget the ties that bind us together. But nationhood is something that lives inside us. We take it with us wherever we go. The one thing about us that can never change is that we are Vincentians. We are an independent people. Fleeting circumstances do not change us. They do not break us. And no matter what the world throws at us, in 2020 and beyond, we will, together as a nation, continually renew our independence. Happy Independence Day to all Vincentians everywhere. Thank you. Remarks by the Director General of the OECS, Dr. Didikas Jules. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, representatives of OECS institutions located in St. Lucia, colleagues of the Commission, nationals of St. Vincent and the Grenadines resident in St. Lucia. On behalf of the OECS Commission, I bring greetings and solidarity to the people and government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as they celebrate a milestone of maturity, 41 years of independence. The people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as the children of Chatouet and Joshua, have over these past 41 years drawn on the historical resolve of their ancestry to chart an increasingly progressive path of national development. In these 41 years, St. Vincent and the Grenadines has faced every adversity head on, seeking to navigate an uncertain and sometimes treacherous water of international diplomacy, unfair trade practices, and impositions by the dominance that seek to keep us in a condition of subordination. The theme of your 41st anniversary, with strength, honor, and dignity, we stand resolute at 41 and beyond, resonates at this point in our history, given the unprecedented challenges that we face today. For small island developing states like ours, our strength can never be in the might of weapons that we possess because we have none. It does not reside in the extent of our land mass or the size of our population because they are both infinitesimal in the global scale of things. Our strength, and in particular the strength of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, lies in our DNA of resistance and resilience. It lies in the immeasurable resolve and courage within the heart of every Vincentian. It lies in the sureness of our footsteps and the determination of our hands as we build our own road to the future. That St. Vincent and the Grenadines, at the tender age of 40 in the life of nations, was able to secure a seat on the United Nations Security Council is a tribute not only to the strategic foresight and resolution of its leadership, but also to the competence and capability of its people. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, in these 41 years, you have demonstrated your strength, you have displayed your honor, and you have defined your dignity. Every one of your leaders on this path have paved their own portion of this road. And so we salute them all for the resolution with which you now stand at 41. Given this trajectory, we expect that the next 41 years will be one of exponential accomplishments that will demonstrate to the world that the power of a nation truly lies in the strength of spirit and character of its people and the strategic resolve of its leadership. Happy 41st anniversary. 
remarks by Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. the Honorable Ralph Gonzalez. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, 41 years ago, on October the 27th, 1979, St. Vincent and the Grenadines regained its independence from Britain, which had been the colonizing power for over 200 years, unbroken since 1763, save and except for a four-year period, 1779, the 1783 when the French were in temporary occupation. Over that period, Britain remained St. Vincent and the Grenadines, known originally by the Kalinago and Garifuna people as Uramin, or alternatively, Yulu and the Bagos. Britain remained St. Vincent and the Grenadines in its own image and interests. However, during that remaking, from 1763 to the reclamation of independence in, 17, in 1979, there was immense resistance to British colonialism and the material conditions of life and living. The resistance to colonialism and the unfolding of the social democratic revolution contributed significantly to our achievement of modern internal self-government and independence, a lifting of our people's material condition of life and living, and improved governance. It is in this tradition of struggle and immense achievement that our government stands. And our government is deepening and broadening the ongoing social democratic revolution. Amidst all its contradictions and complexities, in the people's interests. Over the past 41 years, since the reclamation of our independence, our nation has made immense progress in life, living, production, and good governance, particularly in the last 20 years. The overwhelming evidence is all before us. The considerable progress has been effected despite awesome challenges arising from the limitations of size and material resources, the debilitating legacies of history, the collapse of the preferential market in Britain for bananas, the deleterious impacts of climate change and natural disasters, the global economic depression of 2008 and continuing, turmoil and contradictions in the global political economy, and the prevalence of devastating global pandemics including COVID-19. Despite all these challenges and more, our people collectively have worked hard and smart to build their lives, their communities, and their nation to a high level of human development according to the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. To be sure, there are intractable pockets of indigence and there is unevenness in the distribution of material resources, but the process has been on the way to address efficaciously and inclusively these twin developmental shackles of material deprivation and inequality. Independence Day 2020 is engulfed by a robust campaign for the forthcoming general elections. The Unity Labour Party, which I have the honour to lead for 22 years now, is seeking a fifth consecutive term in government. It is running on the basis of its excellent record of performance, its vision, philosophy, policies, and programmes of sustainable development, its party structures and functioning, its team of quality candidates and quality leadership. Strategically, our government is offering both consolidation and further deepening and broadening of the economic and social transformation which it has initiated and implemented in the people's interest. 
the 100 page ulp election manifesto 2020 provides a bundle of serious and practical proposals for a further self-sustaining development of our country our country has a history of free and fair and peaceful general elections i expect the 2020 elections to be held in accordance with those high standards we in the ulp pledge an honest clean and well-conducted peaceful campaign and let us all humbly accept the people's verdict when it is delivered on polling day happy 41st anniversary of independence long live st vincent and the grenadines Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, nationals of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have come to the end of this virtual flag raising ceremony. I would like to thank all our participants and again to extend the Commission's very best wishes to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on the 41st anniversary of independence and to personally wish you a productive day. I urge you all to please stay safe and continue to observe the COVID-19 health protocols. I thank you.